I remember when the idea of creating a Hall of Fame was born and we knew at five years we would like to do something special. This year we're honoring the 1957 track team, one of the best teams ever fielded by Occidental. Most of us came here because we were recruited by Peyton Jordan. Amongst Peyton Jordan's many qualities was a flair for showmanship. He really believed that if you came out and looked like a winner, you would perform like a winner. We all were track fans. It infected the whole campus. I mean, everybody knew who was on the track team. Everybody went to every meet. Peyton Jordan was a fantastic guy, great charisma, great coach, and then he left for Stanford. And so the, the, the team of 57 was the very first year under the tutelage of Chuck Coker. When Coker came in, he was so impressive immediately that I think Peyton was history. I, I think the major thing it gave us was the incentive to never be defeated by Stanford after he went up there. When Coach Peyton Jordan left, we were kind of upset, but the strength was in the team. It wasn't just the coach. Jordan was very much a disciplinarian. Coker was very innovative. He believed in nutrition. We were drinking skim milk laced with powdered skim milk, laced with desiccated liver. It was awful. That 57 team had team spirit and fire in them that was just, were just unbelievable. In that season, we had a dual meet against SC, which we barely lost. We had a dual meet against UCLA, which we whooped them badly. We had a dual meet against Stanford, where we whooped them badly. Sometimes I think back and I think, did that really happen? I mean, how, how can Occidental beat UCLA when UCLA is the best track team in the country? I think one of the things that was particularly strong about our team in 1957 was our depth. Jack Kemp was a, a javelin thrower, as you might imagine. He specialized in throwing things, and Bob Gutowski was a very humble, quiet person. He was definitely not a high-energy, charismatic leader of the team in terms of personality, but he certainly was the leader of the team in terms of performance. At Stanford, when I had stepped in the ring, a big cheer went up. And that didn't usually happen every time I stepped in the ring. But I looked over and Bob Gutowski was going over the bar having just broken the world record as I was in the ring. Rudy Alston was a very consistent sprinter, won a lot of races. Our sprint relay teams are very, very strong. It's our distance runners, Todd White and Larry Ray and Dave Riceport and Ty Hadley, did great things week after week after week. Being a, a member of the world record setting r relay team was a highlight. I was a lead off person and we sort of kept pace with everybody else. But the SC fourth guy took off like a bat out of hell. And fortunately for us, it's a two lap race and not a one lap race. And the second lap, he just was fading fast. It got very, very exciting as the distance between the SC guy and Ty got shorter and shorter. Chuck Coker is just jumping up and down like he's on a trampoline and a tie comes and blowing on through and wins it. I can't begin to tell you the excitement of that and the days afterwards at school. The NAI meet down in San Diego, that's a national, sort of small college championships. I think Oxy scored 148 in the fraction points. I added up the other day, if you took the next five teams after Oxy to combine, they wouldn't have 142 points. A little tiny school like Oxy has two world records. You don't see that at Pomona. You don't see that at Whittier. It's a great honor to be a part of a team and to be a part of the Oxy Hall of Fame. The people who are in the Hall of Fame, the bar is set very, very high. So I think for somebody to think that this whole team of ours is capable of approaching that bar is quite an exciting honor.